Good morning, I'm Bruce Free Church Chaplain. It's my joy to be with you this morning. And this Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. And it's called the coming of the Son of Man. And we're basing the reading from Mark 13, verses 24 to 37 in the World English Bible. Step. But in those days, after that oppression, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers that are in heaven will be shaken. Then we will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out his angels and will gather together his chosen ones from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the sky. Now from the fig tree, learn this parable. When the branch has become tender and produces its leaves, you know that the summer is near. Even so, also, when you see these things coming to pass, know that it is near at the doors. Most certainly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But on that day... Or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Watch, keep alert, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man travelling to another country, having left his house and given authority to his servants, and to each one his work, and also commanded the doorkeeper to keep watch. Watch, therefore. For you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether at evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he might find you sleeping. What I tell you, I tell you all, watch. So we ask the question, who is expecting Jesus to return? Is there any message? Is there any proof in scripture? or in the creeds of the early Christian fathers. In the creed it says, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. In Luke twenty-one twenty-seven, it says, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. In Matthew 24, 30, it says, Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. In Mark, that we've read earlier, it said, Then we will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. In John 14, 3, it's more subtle. It says, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. All this is rounded up in Titus 2.13, where it says we are looking for that blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So when will this be? Well, we're already in the latter days. We need to look at what the early church preached because they were convinced that Jesus' return was imminent. They preached about the age of fulfilment has dawned, that all the prophecies in the Old Testament had come through about Jesus being born, being living the life and being raised from the dead after that awful crucifixion. And the fulfilment had taken place through the ministry, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And now they said that Jesus is now exalted to the right hand side of God. But Jesus will return. They finished off their message with an appeal for repentance, the offer of forgiveness and the fact that the Holy Spirit on conversion was coming to live in their lives from that point on until they got to that eternal kingdom and then he would be with them forever. Now you might ask, has God ever done something in the past where he's taken a lot of people out? And we think about the times of Noah. Noah was there, he heard from God and God said to him, build this ark because I've seen all the sin of all the people that are living around you. Only Noah and his wife and his children were kept in the ark and 
He built the ark even though everyone was ridiculing him, seeing him building this ark, and he built the ark, and when the floods came, him, his family, and the animals that he selected were all kept safe until that time when the floodwaters died down again and God started again from Noah and his family. So there is evidence from the flood that God saved those people who were righteous in his eyes. And we look forward to this again when Jesus returns. He'll come again as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Someday he'll return and we need to be ready for that time. The Bible does say that the time of the Gentiles will come to an end. In Luke 21, 24, it says, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And in Romans eleven twenty five, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And then if we link that with 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, where it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with God's trumpet, the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and then we'll be with the Lord forever. So this is what's known as the rapture, when Jesus will return for his church. He'll meet them in the clouds, because Jesus will come partway down, and the people will raise to be with Jesus forever. And this is when the time of the Gentiles will end. And then God will focus on the children of Israel again. And when we think about it, and people have highlighted this fact, is Israel can be God's time clock. In 1948, Israel became a nation. And it says in Isaiah, how can this be that a nation is born in one day? And Israel was born in one day. And then in 1967, they increased the land of Israel with, a, with another war. Now, Israel at the moment only occupies part of the land that God gave them. And if we go to Israel, we'll notice that it's quite a modern place with modern trams, railways, roads and things like that. And also encompasses a lot of the old sites where it was said that Jesus walked where John the Baptist baptised in the River Jordan. We also know that the people who believe in Jesus will meet him in the air, and then God will complete the rest of the tribulation. Then Jesus will come again. Now it says in a song, every eye will see the coming of the Lord, and you will hear it on the radio, the TV show, and the satellites around the world. Now, when the Thessalonians were thinking that they'd missed the boat and Jesus had already returned, they wouldn't see every Jesus coming all around the world. At the moment, if something happens in Australia, it's on our TV screens in a moment. You know, so we're in this time where we can see, and if Jesus was to come anywhere, we'd all be able to see it at the same time through modern Technology through our newscasters, through our TV shows, and through the satellites around the world. So we can see that that part in Scripture can be fulfilled when Jesus comes, but it wouldn't have been fulfilled in the first century, I don't think, anyway. So what must we do? How are we to live? In Romans 13, 11, it says, Do this, knowing the time, that it is already time for you to waken out of sleep. But salvation is now nearer to us than when we first believed. Those Thessalonian believers, those early Christians expected to Jesus to return at any time, were still expecting him to return. Will he come back in my lifetime? Will the church be raptured away in my lifetime? Will this happen in my great-grandchildren's time? We just don't know. Only God the Father knows, and he doesn't tell the angels. He doesn't tell the Son or the Holy Spirit. keeps it to himself. When his time is ready, he, Jesus will come back. And the fact that he has not come yet doesn't mean that he's not coming. You know, it reminds me of um, two batteries that we have. In my early life, we used to use these ever-ready batteries. 
so that when you were on your bike and you'd put the battery in your in your light at the front of the bike, you flicked the switch and it came on. It was ever ready. That was its nickname, but the tune run out. But we need to be ever ready. Now you might say, well, Bruce, what's this Mallory battery that's on at the moment? The one that lasts forever. Well, it lasts forever, but sometimes it will come to an end. Just like this age, it will last for a long time. You know, people in the 100s AD were expecting Jesus to return and were still expecting him in 2023. And that doesn't mean that he won't return. That means that we still have to be ready, ready for when he returns. So he doesn't find us doing something wrong. We need to be ever ready like the battery because we know like the other battery that it will fail at some point and Jesus will return. We've got to make this decision while we're here on earth. If we get to that court in in heaven and God says, why should I let you win? We're able to say, because I've accepted Jesus, my Lord and Saviour. But if we get there and we can't say that, well, sorry. So we need to make that decision while we're still alive to follow Jesus, to enjoy having Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, to enjoy having the Holy Spirit enabling us to live this Christian life. So there is a song that Cliff Richard sang so long ago, and it, and it was called Don't Get Left Behind. So we don't want people to be left behind. We need to be ready. Having accepted Jesus as the Lord and Saviour, living the Christian life and being repentant because the measure of a man of his holiness is how soon he repents after he's done something wrong. And we need to abide in Jesus. That means live a life that's pleasing to him. Just like a plant needs to be watered. We need to be watered by the word. That is the word of God. We need to be indwelled by the Holy Spirit to enable us to live this Christian life. So, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord give you his peace, his love, his joy. And may you be ready for when Jesus returns. If it's in our lifetime or it's later on, we need to make that decision now. So may the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So until next time, bye for now.